Well hello and welcome to another video in the Skype clone series. In the last video we created the search screen and we saw how to query the Firestore database for information. So we'll continue from there and we'll define what should happen when the user clicks on the search result. So without any further ado, let's get started. I have opened up the search screen dot file and we display the result inside of this custom tile. So let me just launch the application and perform a search in front of you. The only user that we have in our database goes by the name some user. So as I type in the text field, Firestore is queried and the result is displayed. And the widget in which it is displayed is called custom tile. I've kept the on tab for custom tile empty. Now we want to navigate our user to chat list screen when they click on the custom tile. So instead of the on tab, I'll write navigator dot push, pass in the context, then pass in the material page route class object, which accepts a builder and the builder returns with the context. And finally, we're going to return chat screen. After that, this chat screen would need the details of the user that we are clicking on. Therefore, I'll write receiver searched user. The searched user variable simply represents the user that we have searched for. All right. It's time to create a new screen. So I'll go over to the screens folder and create another folder called chat screens, which will then contain a file with the name chat screen dot dart. Now I'm going to import the material package. After that, I'll create a stateful widget called chat screen. Now I'll go back to the search screen dot dart and just import the newly created file over here. There are still some errors. That's because we have not defined a receiver inside of the chat screen. So just go over to the chat screen file and create a new member variable called receiver of type user and mark it as final. After that, you just need to instantiate it inside of the constructor and all the reds should be gone. Now, inside of the build method, I'll return a scaffold, set the background color to universal variables dot black color. Then for the app bar, I'll write custom app bar and pass in the context. Now we need to create a custom app bar method and it takes a context. We should also specify a return type. So the return type is going to be a custom map bar. Following the return type, I'll return a custom map bar widget. So for the leading, I'm going to pass an icon button and set the icon to icon icons dot arrow back. Here we don't need to specify any icon color because these icons and texts are ultimately going to an app bar widget which by default renders its child as white in color. In fact, since all the icons are going to be white in color, therefore I'm just going to go over to main.dart and define a theme inside of the material app, which accepts a theme data. And set the brightness to dark. So now you would not have to define the icon color anywhere, except if you're using an icon inside of a text field. So for the on press of this icon button, I'm simply going to return navigator.pop context. Now we don't want the title to be in center. So I'll set the center title to false. Then for the title, I'll pass in a text, which uh, displays the name of the user. So I'll write widget.receiver.name. This is going to be the only dynamic portion of the screen. Then we'll move on to the actions. And this takes a list of widgets. So I'll write icon button, icon, icon, and instead of this, I'm going to write icons dot video call. And I'm just going to leave the on press to empty. After that, we'll define another widget called icon button, which also takes an icon. And this time the icon would be for a phone. Again, I'm going to leave the on press to empty. So I'm going to run the app and show the changes. Great. We have our custom app bar. Now it's time for us to create some chat controls. Scroll back to the scaffold widget. And for the body, I'm simply going to pass a column and the first child for this column would again be another widget method called chat controls. So I'm going to create chat controls over here and mark its return type to widget. So I'll return a container and set its padding to edge insets dot all 10. Then for the child, we'll need a row. The first child of this row would be a container. I'm going to give it a little padding, then we'll provide some decoration. So I'll set the gradient to fab gradient and shape to box shape dot circle. 
After that, I'll simply pass an icon widget as a child to this container, which renders the add icon. On the right, you can see the changes that I've made. Then I'll create a sized box widget of width 5, just to give us a little space after the icon. Moving on, we need a text field. So I'll write text field, and the first thing that I'll do is set a controller, although we haven't created it yet. So just scroll to the very top of the file and write text editing controller, text field controller, text editing controller. Now I'll come back to where we were and write controller and pass in the controller that we just defined. After that, I'll set the text style for the text field using the style parameter and set the color to colors.white. All right. So I've switched the device screen with this finished version and notice how the button on the right side of the text field changes as I type something. This is done by triggering some action using the onChanged callback. So I'll write onChanged and it returns with the current text present inside of the text field. We'll need to toggle a boolean variable that keeps track of the writing status. So I'll create a boolean variable at the very top of the file and name it isWriting and set it to false. Now I'll come back to the onChanged method and I'll check that if val.length is greater than zero, which means that the user has written something, then set writing to true or else set writing to false. And just over here, I'll create a method called set writing to, which accepts a Boolean variable. And it is basically responsible for changing the value of is writing variable. We also need to make sure that the user does not send something unwanted, such as a blank message, which only consists of white spaces. So I'll add another condition that, that this block should return true only if the val.length is greater than zero and val.trim is not equal to an empty string. So if the user types blank spaces, this trim function would trim all those spaces to a blank string. Great but we cannot see any changes in the UI just yet, as we are not making use of the isWriting variable. We'll do that later. For now, the only thing that's left is to give some decoration to this text field. So I'll write decoration, input decoration, and the first thing that I'll do is define a hint text. So the hint text would be type a message, and hint style would be text style, color, and set its color to universal variables dot gray color. Then for the border of the text field, I'll write outline input border, set the border radius to border radius dot all radius dot circular 50. After that, I'll write border side, border side dot none to make sure that there are no borders. Then I'll write content padding, edge insets dot symmetric, horizontal 20, vertical 5. And we also want to give some background color to this text field. So I'll first set the field to true and I'll define a fill color. So for the fill color, we'll simply write universal variables dot separator color. The only thing that's left is to define a suffix icon. So I'll write suffix icon, gesture detector, on tap, I'm gonna leave the on tap empty. After that, I'll write child, icon, icons.face. This icons.face would be basically responsible for showing the emoji container. All right, so the text field has changed a lot. Now I'm going to use an icon widget and display the record voiceover icon. After that, I'll display another icon and provide icons dot camera alt to display alternate camera icon provided by Flutter. Oh, and we don't want to show both of these icons if the user is writing something. So I'm just going to show these icons only if is writing is false. And if it isn't, then we'll just show a container. Now it's time for us to work on the send button. So we'll display the send button only if the user is writing something. Therefore I'll write if is writing is true, container, margin, give it a margin of 10 from the left, give it a decoration. So for the decoration, I'm just going to set its gradient to universal variables dot fab gradient and set the shape to box shape dot circle. After that, I'll pass an icon button as a child to this container give it an icon, icon, and the icon would be icons.send, and set its size to 15. Then I'm going to leave the on pressed of this icon button empty. And for the else part, I'm simply going to return a container. 
So this circular send button would only appear if the value of is writing is true, which means that the user is typing something or else we'll just show the other two icons. Great. Now let's work on making containers which would contain our text messages. So I'll scroll to the very top of the file up to scaffold. Then just above the chat controls, I'll create a flexible widget and pass message list as a child. The reason why we are using a flexible widget here is because the message list would definitely contain a list. And if you want to place a list instead of a column, then you're going to need to wrap the list view or the widget that contains the list view with either flexible widget or an expandable widget which extends flexible. Now just over here, I'm going to write widget message list. Eventually we'll read and display the messages using a stream builder widget which receives a stream of messages from the messages collection. But right now, I just want to work on the UI. Therefore, I'll simply return a list view dot builder, give it a padding of 10 and I'll pass a value manually for the item count. Now I'll write item builder, which returns with a context and an index. Right now, we won't be making use of this index variable. All we need to do here is to return a chat message item. Eventually, this widget would also take a document snapshot as an argument but we don't have to worry about that for now. It's time for us to define the chat message item widget. So it returns a container and I'm going to set its margin to agentsets.symmetric vertical 15. Then for the child as well, we want a container. And for the child of this container, I'm going to write sender layout. When we integrate this UI with the backend, there will be two different layouts, one for the sender and the other for the receiver as you can see on the right side of the screen. Now I'll create another widget and call it send a layout. Then just over here, I'll create a variable of type radius and name it message radius. Then I'll use radius.circular to initialize the variable and pass the value 10. We'll be making use of this variable to define border radius for the send layout. So I'll return a container, set its margin to 12 from the top. So when a user types a really long message, this box will fill the entire width. We don't want that. Therefore, I'll define a maximum width for this container. So I'll write media query dot of context dot size dot width into 0.65. This ensures that no matter how long or continuous the message is, it does not take more than 65% of the screen width. So let's define the most important part, which is to provide some decoration. So I write decoration, box decoration, and I'll set the color to universal variables dot center color, since we are defining a send layout. Now for the border radius, we only want to provide a border radius from top left, top right, and bottom left corners. And the value of radius that we wish to provide is message radius. After that, I'll pass the padding widget as a child for this container, which takes a padding of 10, and then for the child, we'll simply write text, hello. For the styles, we'll simply write text style, set the color to white and font size to 16. That's it. So the sender layout is done. Receiver layout is going to be very similar to the sender layout. So I'll just copy the entire thing and paste it here. Then change the name from sender layout to receiver layout and replace this top left with bottom left. So let me just show you the progress that we have made so far. All right, it looks better. And if I replace the sender layout with receiver layout, it looks like this. Currently, both of these appear on the same side of the screen because we don't have any mechanism to detect that which one of them is the receiver layout and which one of them is the sender layout. But once we integrate this with Firebase, we'll determine the alignment of receiver layout and sender layout based on the current user's ID. We're almost done with the UI. The only thing that's left is to show a bottom sheet when the plus button is pressed. So I'll scroll through the code to the point where we have defined that button or icon. Here it is. Now I'm going to wrap this container with another widget called gesture detector to detect a tap using the on tap callback method, which would then trigger add media modal function. And this function accepts a context. It's time to define the add media model method. 
So it takes a context and then it will return show model bottom sheet. After that, we'll pass the context that we received to this bottom sheet and set the elevation to zero, background color to universal variables dot black color, and then bottom sheet is built using a builder, which returns with a context of its own. So this builder would ultimately return a column. Then I'll write children, and the first child for this column is gonna be a container with a symmetric padding of 15 vertically. This first widget is basically the heading of the bottom sheet. This first widget is basically the heading of the bottom sheet. I'm gonna define it all over here. Although you could separate all the upcoming widgets into their own local methods to keep the code cleaner. Now I'll pass in a row as a child for this container. And then the first child for this row would be a flat button widget, which would be responsible for showing a close icon. And for the on pressed, I'm gonna return navigator dot maybe pop. You could also write navigator dot pop. Both of these would basically do the same thing. That is to close the bottom sheet. After that, the second child would be an expandable widget. Then for the child, I'll pass an align widget with alignment set to center left. The text and the text that we want here is context and tools. After that, I'll write style, text style, set the color to colors.white, font size to 20, and font weight to font weight.bold. After the heading, we wish to show a list of items. Therefore, we're gonna have to use a list view widget. But if you try to use a list view instead of a column, then it'll throw an exception. So in order to prevent that, we're gonna have to start off with a flexible or expandable widget, just like we did earlier. I'll pass list view as a child to this flexible, and I'll write children. So if you look at the finished version, we're gonna need to work with the custom layout again and again. Therefore, I'll just create my own widget called modal tile. So just scroll out of this function and create another stateless widget called modal tile. Now we'll define some member variables such as final string title, final string subtitle, and final icon data icon. Then I'll initialize all of these variables inside of the constructor. Then I'll come inside of the build method, and the first widget that we'll return is gonna be padding. Then I'll write edge insets dot symmetric horizontal 15. Then for the child, I'm going to pass custom tile. So this custom tile is also one of the custom widgets present inside of the widgets folder. I'll set the mini to false, leading to container, margin, edge insets dot only write 10, give it some decoration. So I'll set the border radius to border radius dot circular 15 and color to universal variables dot receiver color. Then I'll also give it some padding in all directions of 10 units, child, icon, icon. So this displays the icon that we passed to the model tile class. For the color, I'll write universal variables dot gray color, size 38. Then the next parameter which I'll target is gonna be subtitle, text, subtitle and i'm going to give some style to this as well so i'll set its color to universal variables dot gray color and font size to 14. then finally for the title i'll write text title style text style and i'm going to set its font weight to bold color to white and font size to 18. now coming back to the list view i'm going to start off by writing modal tile title media subtitle share photos and videos then for the icon i'll pass icons dot image all right let's check it out so this is what it looks like let me just copy and paste some more modal tiles over here so we have a file a contact location schedule call and create poll on the right you can see the changes that we made and how it looks and we are done with the ui for this screen in the next video, I'll implement the complete chat functionality. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, then don't forget to check out the complete Skype clone series. And if you like it, or if you just love Flutter in general, then hit that subscribe button to receive updates about it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.